By 1937, the Orange Fordson N was the best-selling tractor in Britain, and they were slowly being seen on a few farms over here. Although before the last war, horses were still the main source of power on the Irish farms. This tractor had a reputation of being hard to start, especially when warm. This fault was not helped by the changes made to the engine, which made her prone to oil the spark plugs. It is most likely that this Fordson was made at the Dagenham factory in East London, although up until the early 1930s, Fordson ends had been made in Cork in Southern Ireland. The Cork factory continued to be owned by the Ford Company up until the mid-1980s, building cars and trucks. Henry Ford's father, William Ford, was born in Cork, and his father, John Ford, was considered to be a quite wealthy farmer. However, at the height of the Great Famine in 1847, John Ford was forced to uproot his whole family and emigrate to Quebec. His wife, Henry Ford's grandmother, did not survive the trip. In 1917, Henry Ford, now a successful and wealthy businessman, came back to a depressed area of Cork. His historian wrote, Henry Ford's family roots drew him back to Ireland. Ford considered what he could achieve in America, he could also do here, and he built his factory on the site of an old racecourse. His first office was registered at 36 South Mall, Cork. The factory initially made tractors, but in 1921 cars were made there as well. This Fordson was first manufactured in September 1938 and is now the property of Paddy McKenna and his son Eamon. The previous owner was Brian Kearney from Swatra. Costing £205, which was a large outlay in 1938, it was purchased only on large farms. The Ford Company were quick to point out that a Fordson N could do the work of eight horses and two horsemen. It could work all day, didn't need to be fed and didn't need any rest. It was estimated, well by them in any case, that with a Fordson N doing the work, the bills could be cut by half. Like all early tractors, the N was not without flaws. These included being difficult to start on cold mornings and a tendency to rear up if the plough encountered an obstruction. The engine overheating was another problem. This problem was solved by a more efficient radiator holding 42 litres of water. This extra weight also helped to keep the front down. The plough being used here today is a cockshut trail plough. The cockshut plough company was originally founded in 1877 in Canada. Known for its quality designs, the company became the leader in the tillage tools section by the 1920s. In the 1950s and 1960s they were making tractors, although by the 1970s the cockshut name was no longer used. The field being ploughed here contains two acres and is considered to be very good ground. It is in the townland of Ballanderry, close to the old Ballanderry church. The field is being prepared for a crop of oats, more likely called corn in the old days, and when this tractor was in its prime, Oaks or corn would have been grown by nearly every farmer. It was last ploughed in 1992 after a crop of potatoes was grown. Nowadays, potato growers would require a much bigger field than this to grow potatoes. Indeed, sad to say, many farmers would tell you that growing potatoes these times is hardly worthwhile, as most of our potatoes and most of our other vegetables are imported from Holland. This green Fordson N is the property of Will Gribben. It is a 1943 model, and you will notice that it has much smaller mudguards than the orange tractor. As this tractor was manufactured during the war, this was to save materials. Frank Bigmore ploughing here with a three for a plough behind his 1964 Fordson Super Major could easily turn over twice the ground that the Fordsons could in a day. Frank is the man behind this project, and unlike the farmer of today, he is not worried about a profit or loss margin, for everyone in this field is working free of charge, 
giving their services willingly and proudly displaying their tractors, skills and vintage machinery.